everybody. I hope you're having a really good week. I have a pretty cool story for you this week. It's called The Legend of the Three Trees, and it's the classic story of following your dreams. It's written by the, from the screenplay of George Towell and Rob Lewis, of the traditional folktale. Life burst into the world on the third day of creation from under the water. God brought forth the earth. Peeking up through the earth's soil, green plants waved like millions of tiny flags. Grasses, bushes, and trees grew into every shape and size. The trees towered above all. They were pine trees and poplar trees, olive and oak, willow and walnut. Each held its own seed and fruits. Their seeds and fruits scattered as animals carried them from the trees. In a green valley, a fox dropped an olive pit. And along a rocky shore, a stork split open an acorn. On a, tall on a tall mountain, a goat accidentally shook loose a seed from a pine cone. So there are three trees. The pit, the acorn, and the seed grew into saplings, watered by rain and warmed by the sun. They reached upward. In time, a beautiful olive tree blossomed in the valley. A mighty oak stood on the ro rocky coast, and a tall pine tree stood on the mountain. As each tree grew, it dreamed of what it would become. The trees are kind of like you guys, all different, but all have different trees. The olive tree dreamed of becoming a beautiful and important treasure chest. Decorated with sparkling jewels, it would hold the greatest treasure in the world. One day a woodsman came to the forest. It seems that the olive tree's dream would come true. The woodsman chose the olive tree from all the other trees. The olive tree trembled with happiness. At last, it would become a beautiful treasure chest. The woodsman took the olive tree to his workshop. He cut the wood into boards and hammered them into a box shape. But to the tree's surprise, the woodsman did not make the box into a treasure chest. He did not polish the olive tree's fine wood or fill the box with gold. Instead, he dragged the box into a stable with messy sheep, smelly cows, and noisy chickens. The woodsman filled the box with hay. The olive tree saw what it had become, a manger, a mere feeding box for animals, and knew then that it would never hold a treasure. As the olive tree's dream faded into the dusty stable, the oak tree looked out over the water with a dream of its own. Strong and proud, it dreamed that, it might, that its mighty trunk would be made into a mighty ship that would carry a king. One day, shipbuilders cut down the oak tree and hauled it to their boatyard. They saw the board trunk into boards. They bent the boards to form sides of the boat. With each passing day, the oak tree felt certain that its dream was coming true. But then, when the shipbuilders were done, the oak felt a small and weak. It did not become a mighty ship at all. Instead, it was a little fishing boat launched on a calm lake. The mighty oak knew then that a king would never sail in a little fishing boat. Ah, oh, poor trees. High on the mountainside above the oak boat, the pine tree stood tall. Many times it saw people in the valley looking up. The pine tree hoped that its towering branches would remind people of the glory of God's creation. It dreamed that it would always stay on the mountain and point people to God. One night, a fierce storm shook the mountain. The pine tree bent and swayed in the powerful wind. As thunder boomed, a bolt of lightning flashed from the sky and splintered the tree's trunk. With the sound almost as loud as the thunder, the pine tree crashed to the ground. The pine tree's dream crashed down with it. No one would ever look up to it again. Its long trunk now just blocked things in the mountain road. The tree thought that things could not possibly get any worse, but then strong soldiers hauled it to a scrapyard. Unused and forgotten, the pine lay on a heap of old lumber. It knew then that a piece of scrap wood could never point people to God. Many years passed. The tree's great dreams seemed so far away that they stopped thinking about them. For what greatness could come to a feeding box, a fishing boat, and scrap wood? But God had his own plan for each of the trees. So we've got one that's a manger, one that's lying in the scrap yard, and one that is a small fishing boat. I wonder if there's anything that's going to happen with these trees. Let's find out. One night, shepherds kept watching over their flock and saw an angel. A great light shone all around. The angel told them not to be afraid. For their Savior, Jesus, had been born in Bethlehem. 
Just as the angel had said, the shepherds found the baby lying in a manger. The olive tree had not become a treasure chest, but now, as the manger, it held the greatest treasure of all time, God's only son, Jesus. The infant Jesus grew into a man, and the boat traveled to the very lake that, hold, that held the oak fishing boat. One day, the little boat carried Jesus onto the lake with the fishermen. Suddenly, a great storm swept over the lake. Water washed into the boat. The oak boat struggled with all of its strength so it would not sink. Quiet, be still, Jesus said. The storm stopped. The oak boat, oak boat felt Jesus' power. The boat had never carried a king of this world, but it now carried the king of kings. Leaves us one more tree. The pine tree knew nothing of Jesus or his miracles, but one morning it heard angry voices in the distance. Crucify him, the people yelled. Soldiers came to the scrapyard and grabbed the forgotten pine. The pine tree expected to be cut into firewood. Instead, the soldiers cut its trunk into two pieces to make a cross. Then they laid the cross on Jesus' back. On a hillside under a blackening sky, the pine tree cross swayed as the soldiers raised it. It did not know whether it would bear the weight of a man upon it. The pine tree had only wanted to point people to God. Now it knew it would become a sign of death. Jesus died that day to take away the sins of all who believed in him. He was taken down from the cross and laid inside a tomb. Then a wondrous thing happened. Three days later, Jesus rose again to life. So Jesus fulfilled his heavenly Father's plan for him. And what of the three trees? They, too, had fulfilled God's plans for them. Miraculously, God's plan had taken them beyond their youthful dreams. The olive wood manger had the gr held the greatest treasure of all, God's beloved son. The oak finishing boat had carried the king of kings, God's son, during his work on earth. And to this day, the cross points people to God as a symbol of his greatest love for us. Sometimes the dreams we have for ourselves are much smaller than the dreams that God has for us. The three trees' dreams came true, just not in the way that they imagined. And so it is for each of us. For if we follow God's path, we will travel far beyond our greatest dreams. So I wanted to share that book with you. I know you guys aren't actually trees, you're like people, right? And I know you guys all have things that you want to be, things that you want to do. You have your dreams, right? Sometimes... What you think is going to happen doesn't always work out that way. But, just like for the trees, it turned out even better. So, for example, when I wanted to teach, I always knew I wanted to teach. I was like, I'm going to teach kindergarten or some, some really small, like children, right? And I was like, I'm going to do this. It'll be great. And then when I got hired, I was teaching fourth grade. And I was kind of like, hmm, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. So, kind of like how the trees, they thought their dream was ruined. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. But, you know, I actually loved it, and I have never had so much fun working with older kids. That would have never happened to me unless God had pointed me in that direction. So, this week, at school, or wherever you are at home, okay, if something doesn't turn out the way that you think it's going to, I want you to pause for a second and be like the trees, okay? Just sit, relax for a second, be still, and know that God is there, okay? And I want you to realize that just because things aren't going the way that you seem doesn't mean that it's over for you, doesn't mean that there's no hope, okay? Things are going to change, I promise. I have been living this story the last week. There's been a lot of stuff going on for all of the teachers. Some of us are getting moved around to different schools, all kinds of stuff, okay? So I, I understand how you're feeling. And if there's something where you're like, you know, this isn't going to work out for me, I can't be in the class of the same class as my best friend, whatever it is, relax, okay? It might not seem like the best time in the whole world, right? Like when that pine tree was laying in the scratch, or the like extra lumber yard, okay? He wasn't having the time of his life, but it gave him a moment to just be still and listen and wait for God to show him what he's going to do. So, my challenge for you guys this week is if something goes awry or doesn't work out the way you think it will, which, knock on wood, I hope it doesn't, but it probably will. That's the way the world turns, right? Not everything goes the way we want it to. I want you to know that just like our trees here, everything's going to work out, just probably not in the way that you imagine, okay? 
I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Can't wait to talk to you again. I love you. Bye.